Amen. Hey, come on, I hear you. Hey, welcome to Home Ministries. We're glad you're here with us. Can we give the Lord a hand praise in this place right now? Come on, he's mighty to the pulling down of strongholds. He is awesome. I don't care what goes on in your life, how bad it seems. God is able to do wonderful things in your life. Anybody been through a storm lately? Come on, a little storm. A little rough place in your life. Some hardship in your life. Amen. You were never alone, even though you might have felt like it. God was there and he saw you. And guess what? He saw you through it. The question was, have you ever, have anybody ever been through a storm? That means you already out. Come on. Now let me ask you this. Anybody in a storm right now? All right. Please do me a favor. Do not be a storm chaser. Don't go looking for some mess to get involved in. You know how we have people that love drama? Don't be looking for it. Tonight, uh, it's actually going to be pretty much a follow-up to our meeting. We had a, uh, a good uh, leadership meeting on the other uh, night with our directors and leaders here and uh, re refocusing some of our vision, getting things ready. And I talked about two principles um, uh, that uh, cause us to move or not move, move or not move, right? Uh, momentum is the movement inertia is what tries to prevent the movement or what you have to overcome to start moving all right so i and i know some of y'all say this is old hat we talked about this the other night and we got it we figured it out we we're, we're just so awesome i get that but we're also tonight going to get involved in some other areas with that because in the middle of your motion before inertia can take place there's something else that begins to happen the book of romans the uh 12th chapter verse 21 reads like this be not overcome of evil but overcome evil with good right is that what it says keep reading on down to uh, the 13th chapter verse 1 let every soul be subject unto the higher powers for there is watch this no power but of God the power that be are ordained of God stick with me whosoever Therefore, resisted the power, resisted the ordinance of God, right? Somebody say motion. Motion. Is power. It's power. So anything that tries to resist the motion, are y'all still checking this out? Huh? Yeah. Anybody that tries to res resist that motion is not of God, all right? Because all power comes from who? God. There you go. And they that resist shall receive to themselves, watch this, it's pretty harsh, damnation. Is that what the scripture said? I didn't say that. I read it, but I didn't write it. Did y'all hear what I'm saying? Anyone who tries to resist the momentum of God, the move of God, the action of God, huh, shall receive to themselves damnations. For the rulers are not a terror to good works, but to evil. Wilt thou then not be afraid of the power? Question. Do that which is good, and thou shalt have praise of the same. Right? So right now, can we just go ahead and give God a hand of praise right there? God, I thank you. I thank you for your power. I, I thank you, dear God, for being in a church full of people who love you and, dear God, have a desire to do your will. God, I praise you and I magnify your name. God, because I realize without you, dear God, I would be lost. I would be without, dear God, I would be dead, dear Lord. I wouldn't even be able, dear God, to move or have my being because through you, all those things are applied. In Jesus' name. Tonight I'm going to talk to you about that third element. We talked again about inertia. We talked uh, about um, uh, momentum or motion. And the next one we're going to talk about tonight is called, I misspelled this on here, but I hope I didn't on there. Friction. I did. did it good there. Friction. I just left the R out on my page. <laughs> Friction. Well, I can tell you I mess up too. <laughs> Amen. Friction. Uh, by definition, friction is the resistance. Watch this. We just talk about it. If you resist the power of God, you get damnation. Friction is the resistance to motion of one object moving relative to another. Conflict, animosity, 
if conflict or animosity caused by a clash of wheels, temperament, or opinions. Anything that comes contrary to the will of God is friction. If you don't believe that, have you ever been somewhere and you're trying to decide and there's all to, well, I'm going to just be pretty like this uh, for the husbands in the house and, and some of you that, that, that are almost husbands. Uh, you're trying to decide where you're going to eat. Right? What do you want? Oh, I don't want, I don't care where we go until you pull into the place you want to go and then they don't order because they don't want that. <laughs> Somewhere along the line, something stopped the momentum. The motion just stopped. All right? That, that's an easy one, right? Friction. Friction can happen by two opposing wheels trying to come this way. That's why in the church, in the church which belongs to God, we cannot oppose his direction. We must move the way he desires us to move because if we pull against him, first of all, we will not win. Second of all, watch this, not only will we will not win, but we will die and lose any opportunity for salvation. I don't know about you, but it is a whole lot easier for me to do what God wants to be done than I know in the end I will receive my reward. Can somebody tell him, God, I thank you for what you have in store for me when all this is over. Yes. Friction sometimes comes in the, the package of frustrations or things that are happening in your life. Friction can come from your job with your supervisors or bosses or just the day-to-day -day grind of life uh, causing you to, to try to, trying to force you not to pray, trying to force you not to worship, trying to force you into an, an argument or into something that's contrary to the will of God. That's friction. Remember this. If you're in motion, watch this, m friction will try to slow you down. But if you're standing still, Friction will just keep you there. Right. Does that make good sense? Yeah. Watch this. The harder you're pushing, the faster something is in motion. It takes more friction to slow it down. The more friction that's applied to a fast moving object cre begins to create power. Uh, are y'all feeling what I'm saying? Power, then you begin to get heat. Then you begin to get smoke. And here's the thing. One or the other will overcome. Uh, do I have anybody that's ever changed brakes on the car? Brakes lock up on your car. They're going to begin to smoke. They're going to begin to burn. One or two things are going to happen. It's going to stop the car. Or the speed of that automobile is going to overcome the brakes. In the spiritual realm, devil, put your brakes on as much as you want to. I'm not going to slow down for you. And a matter of fact, if you stay there too long, you will burn up. <laughs> See? Friction tries to stop you from being and doing the will of God. Friction tries to stop you. It, it, the devil hates when you, you're starting to move. That's why when service starts getting red hot and the praise is beginning to move, huh? There, something will come in the room to try to shut it down. Uh, a bad spirit, a bad feeling, or somebody you've been angry with or arguing with walks in the building and all of a sudden it tries to slow it down. But what you got to do is learn how to keep it going. Even when, uh, are y'all okay with me right now? Even when it feels like, praise God, even when it feels like something that you don't want to happen. All right? You're cranking through it. You're pushing through it. You're pressing through it. You're making sure that it happens. You're doing everything in your power to overcome that friction. But friction has the ability, if we give it rain, to stop us in our tracks. Okay? In the book of Philippians, the third chapter, verse 6. Concerning zeal, how many have zeal? Amen. I got a couple of hands up with a little zeal, a little excited, a little fired up, a little zeal. Make sure it's with knowledge. Uh, concerning zeal, persecuting the church, touching the righteousness which is in the law, blameless. Watch this. Come on. But what things were gained to me, those I counted lost to what? Are for Christ. Ye doubtless, 
Yea, doubtless, and I count all things, but loss for the what? Excellency of the knowledge of Christ Jesus, my Lord. Now, if you don't know, this is Paul talking and he's saying all the things that, that used to stop me, all the things I used to worry about. Whether I got enough to eat, whether I got enough money, whether, whether, whether I'm going to be okay, whether I got a job, whether I got somewhere to be, whether, whether I, and I'm pleasing man, whether people like me, whether they don't like me. What's the opinion of folks? All the things that used to slow you down, because if we're honest in this place, everybody in here, sometime, one time or another, or sometimes right now in our lives, we worry about what people think about us. Amen. And we worry when the bills come in and you look at the amount at the bottom line on that bill and then you look at your bank account and your bank account says this and your bill says this. Those things can start to worry on you when your husband, your wife or whoever is in your life, that special person in your life begins to go awry, go astray, begin to move in another direction or begin to do things that are frustrating you. Those things begin to weigh on you. When the doctor says you only got six months to live, those things begin to what? Weigh on you. Those are friction that try to come in. But here Paul is saying, you could hear, I may used to worry about those things, but today I'm no longer worrying about those things. Why? Because I realize that I am not living for the moment. I'm living for the future that God has already plotted out for me, that he has already laid in line for me, that he's already set up for me. You can bring your friction. You can try to slow me down, but I promise you I'm going to break the brakes right up off of you. I love um, the Pauline writings and how he is so descript in some things. Yea, doubtless, I count all things but loss for the excellency of the knowledge of Christ Jesus. Just to know God. None of the stuff I had even can compare. For whom I have suffered the loss of all things. Watch this. And do count them but dung that I may win Christ. It doesn't matter what happens to me here on planet Earth. Yes, yes. The only thing I'm concerned with is being more like God. Yes. Because if I keep looking at the things that are going on, if I keep worrying about what the news is saying, if I keep worrying about what people are saying, if I keep worrying about my circumstance or my situation, I am the one applying the brakes. Right. And then friction begins to what? Slow your momentum. I'm here to tell somebody tonight, you better back off on the brakes a little bit. Huh? Some of y'all understand what I'm saying. If you've ever rolled downhill on a bicycle and it felt like it was getting a little bit too fast, what'd you do? You start pumping them brakes. Unless you don't, unless you just a little bit on the not so bright side and you hit the front brake. You will only do that once. Amen. Uh, do I have a witness? I have done it. Yes. You hit that and the back tire has the, 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 the strange flow of coming over because the momentum in the back is always trying to surpass that. Uh, you understand? Right? Now, just, just, from, just to throw this in there, just for informational purposes only. Anytime there is a car collision, be that with any object, movable or something that's standing still, there are a minimum of three impacts because everything is moving in whatever vehicle it was, if you're hitting something steel. Everything in there is moving. Three impacts. The vehicle impacts with the other object. Watch this, right? The outer part of your body, the skeletal portion, the skin, the fleshly part, hits whatever stops in front of it. A lot of times it's the airbag, sometimes it's the seat belt, sometimes it's the, the, the glass, whatever. The third one are your organs, which smash into your skeletal portion of your body. You understand what I'm saying? Yeah. Because whenever you bring something to a solid stop, right, the momentum that is pushing on the back is moving at the same rate of that which is traveling in front of it. 
Are you hearing what I'm saying? So what the enemy wants to do is to bring you to a screeching halt so that he can stop your prayer, stop your praise, stop your, 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 your time with him, stop you from doing it because I'm going to wreck not some of you, but all of you. Matter of fact, if you allow him to do it enough, he will make it a fatality. A fatality in the sense that you will just backslide, give up, throw in the towel, walk away from God and never come back. Why? Because it was such a hard hit that you took. So every now and then, you've got to be able to trust, well, all the time, you've got to trust in God. If you, God got you in, in, in a fast motion and you're, I mean, you're flying, you got to know who is in control. I tell people, I hate that little bumper sticker that came out years ago that says, Jesus is my co-pilot. Well, go ahead and let him be your co-pilot. No, Jesus is my pilot because I don't know where I need to go or what I need to do. But I trust him where he's taking me, even if it's around the block and over the hill and all over here. No matter, I know he's taking me to the right place. See, he's awesome. He's awesome that I might win Christ. And the Bible says, and he found in him not having my own righteousness. Is that a mouthful? which of the law but that which is through the faith of Christ the righteousness which is of God by faith that I may know him watch this that I may know who Jesus that I may know him and the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of his what suffering being made what conformable unto his death now, we could teach that uh, from a doctrinal uh, a, a standpoint and we could talk about the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ equating to the repentance, the baptism, and the infillment of the Holy Ghost. We could do that and, and I'm in here with you and I know you know that. But what he's really saying is everything that happened before was a stumbling block for me. Everything moving forward that God's taken me through. And now think about it. The stripes on his back. Talking about Paul, the whips that he took, the shipwrecks, the imprisonment, all those things are worth it. When could he have stopped? Any time he wanted to. But he understood the mission was greater than him. When you overcome inertia, when you overcome that force that is stopping you from moving, when you overcome that and you get to moving, don't be afraid of the motion. Don't get motion sickness, if you would. Don't be afraid of what God is doing. You start to chugging along a little bit and it starts getting good. But what you never, also never what you want to do is think that it's you that's driving. You must constantly keep your eyes on Jesus. Say, God, take me where you want to take me. Keep pushing me where you want to push me. I'm not going to put the brakes on. Why? Because you're in charge. But that doesn't happen. Because when it starts getting too good or, or things start happening, we're, we, we have, some of us anyway, have a mindset, I'm waiting for this other shoe to drop. I'm waiting for something bad because whenever good things come like this, something bad's about to happen. And so we start slowing down because we're afraid if we get, we get to going too fast, the devil's going to come in and mess up what we got. But I'm here to tell you, we have mountaintop days and seasons and we have valley days and seasons it doesn't matter if God be for me he's more than the whole world against me if, he, if he's got me right there for, where, for whatever time he's got me there I know that I'm not alone for he'll never leave me he'll never forsake me he said he's gonna stick with me he's gonna stay with me I'm not worried about what the enemy is trying to put in my life because I know that God has already got it in control so go ahead and push me as far as you want to take me right but there comes a time when we have to put in some effort. We're going to talk about that here in a minute. If by any means I might attain unto the resurrection of the dead. Verse 12. Not as though I had already attained. We haven't made it yet. Okay. I can't afford to stop now. Because I haven't made it. I, I, I get it. Most of you in here have repentant and been baptized in the, the life-changing name of Jesus and have received uh, the gift of the Holy Ghost. I get that. And because we've done that, we've come out of darkness into his marvelous light. I get that. 
and I get the old man has passed away and behold all things have become new I get that but we can never just take that and stop right there because then we become like the secular church and then all uh, once saved always saved and we began to think I've done my little due diligence now I'm good and I don't have to move anymore no this thing is a motion it's always in motion God is constantly trying to find more people reach more places go places where you thought you'd never go before that's why when he's driving he's going to take you exactly where you probably would never go on your own you're going to deal with people that you probably would never talk to and some of you want to put on the brakes. Oh, they don't look like me. No, they, 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 they're too educated. Or they're too undereducated. And you want to put on the brakes. Surely that's not where God is taking me. But no, if he's driving, he's taking you right through somewhere. They may, you may only win one person in that entire group, but that's the person that God had ordained for, for to, to be one for Christ, who may be the very next Paul, may be the, come on, may be the very next Peter. Not as though I've already attained, either were already perfect, but I follow after if that I have apprehended that for, watch this, which also I am apprehended of Christ Jesus. Yeah, why I think, why people thinking you caught him, he caught you. <laughs> why you think you, you running this thing? He's saying, no, 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 I'm running this thing, right? Now, now I get it, we had to repent, we had to do those things, but no man can come unless he draws them. There's something, all that stuff that happened in your life, you need to go back to that and start checking off some stuff. Well, that car did not hit me, check. That was God knocking on my door. That bullet whizzed by, check. Cancer did not take me out, check. I, 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 should, I should be homeless, check. I, 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 should, I, should, I should be without right now, check. Matter of fact, my marriage should have failed, check. And you need to be looking at those things and saying, what, look here, I look at where I'm at. And it, it doesn't make sense, but God constantly did something. Now, you might have said, I went through the harshness of the things that made me think the marriage was going to crash. I went through the accident where my car got totaled, but God still brought me up. None of that was good, but God was doing a work letting you know I'm in control. We got to get to that place that we just understand who God is and that he has apprehended us. And if he's got us. If he's holding us in the palm of his hand, if he's got us here, no man can pluck us out. Do y'all understand that logic? There's not a devil in hell that can pull you out. Not one. Now you can jump out, but you, the devil can't pull you out. Backslidden family members can't pull you out. Unsaved family members can't pull you out. Right? You have to choose to jump out. Now you have that right. God will give you that right, but I wouldn't do that. Because then I'm going against his desire and the blessings he has for me. Brethren, I count not myself to have apprehended, but this one thing I do. Forgetting those things which are behind. Right? I forget my mistakes. I forget my, 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 my mess. I forget how, how ugly I was. I forget all that mess. Right? I forget all the things people said about me. I forget my mistakes, right? Because now I've got to start applying a little pressure here because when the enemy tries to add friction to your momentum or your motion, you've got to be able to move to another level, right? The Bible never said that the devil wouldn't come. Oh, he's going to come. He left Jesus for a season. Huh? He's going to come and he's going to try to slow you down. But when that begins to happen, you've got to be in the spiritual mindset that you feel it coming. I see where we're headed. Man, we're running hard. Everything is going good. Man, revival is breaking out. This is happening and that is happening. And then all of a sudden, it starts slowing down. You can't allow the enemy. Now, if God is slowing it down, that's one thing. But you'll know the difference. Because when God slows it down, there's no friction. But when the enemy starts slowing it down, that's where you, you, why am I getting angry all the time? Why am I getting, why are they acting like this? Why are you all the same? Wait a minute, there's something that's going on. How come people aren't praying anymore? How, how come this isn't happening? There's some friction begins to be applied, right? Watch this. So you got to learn to do what, he, what, what, what Paul said here. Forgetting those things which are behind, watch, and reaching forth. <laughs> now understand this. I'm no longer looking that way. Now I'm reaching this way. 
Are you following me? I'm not looking back because looking back is going to show me nothing but where I came from and what I was. Right. When I'm reaching forward, I'm not reaching into what I can really see. Right. Pay attention. Why? Because I don't walk by what? Sight. I'm walking by what? Faith. I'm reaching into a dimension that I've never been to before, to a place where God is trying to take me to that I've never been before. So I've got to learn to reach when it feels like I ought to stop. When fear begins to try to rock your members and, and you begin to say, oh, I don't know what's going to happen. No, press. <laughs> oh, you got to reach. Huh? He's saying, come on, I'm right here. Come on, come on, come on. Reaching forth unto those things which are before. Verse 14 says, I press toward the mark of a prize. A high calling of God in Christ Jesus. Here's the thing. We, for some reason, we as the people of God thought that every day was going to be hidey hole. And there was never going to be anything that opposes us. And I believe the scriptures, no weapon formed against us shall prosper, but it didn't say that there wouldn't be any weapons created. It never said there wouldn't be an attempt. The attempts are coming. The attacks are coming. It never said that. Right? The enemy is going to do everything he can to stop you. So Paul says, I'm going to press. Right? The difference in the word press and push, right, is a push is not necessarily as hard I can push this here, but if there's an opposing force on the other side or there is a wall and I've got to get on the other side of that wall, I've got to be able to press my way through. So when the enemy comes this way with everything he's got and I'm already in motion, he wants to slow me down before I get there because he knows at full speed, huh, I'm going right through him. So he starts way back here. Not when you get to the pressing point. He starts way back here trying to slow your momentum down. Add a little more friction, putting a little bump in the road, adding some things in your life, making, making, making you get laid off for your job, making things happen. You're sitting there going, oh, my God, I don't know if I can make it. And God is saying, just hang on. I'm driving. I'm taking you through this. You're not going to be lost. You're going to be all right. Just hang on. And the enemy keeps on saying, I'm going to put a little bit of break on here. I'm going to come in. I'm going to bring things in on all sides. I'm going to begin to tempt you. I'm going to bring frustration. I'm going to bring uh, the people in, sitting on your pew going to get on your nerves. I know that never happens. I'm going to start causing things to happen. I'm gonna, the, the pastor is going to say something that's going to offend you. Because there's some breaks that got to be applied. Because he understands if you come full force, you're going to wipe him out. Yes. His bluff is over. Yes. But what really happens most times when we stop, huh? We don't stop at the wall. We don't stop at the pressing point. We stop before it because we give up. Yes. Can I help you today? I refuse to let the devil steal what God has for me. I'm going to press where? Toward the mark. I'm not pressing the wrong direction. Wait a minute. I'm not pressing the brakes. Mm -hmm. yes. <laughs> right. But I'm going to press against whatever the enemy brings before me. Right. I'm going to knock it out of place. I'm going to put it in perspective. I'm going to put it in its place. Are y'all with me today? Yes. Huh? Why? Because I'm an overcomer. Why don't you high five your neighbor and say, you're an overcomer. You're an overcomer. Oh, y'all act like... Anyone I'm like, oh, no. no, I mean, tell them like you really believe it because somebody sitting in this room right now really don't think that they can make it. Somebody sitting in this room right now, y'all not hearing what I'm saying, really thinks like they've tried, they got tired of trying this stuff, they're done trying this stuff. Huh? Oh, I tried that Jesus stuff. I came up for prayer. I did all that. And I just don't, I just don't know. I, I don't know if I can just keep pushing this. And it just feels like nothing's happening. I ain't heard from God in a long time. Baby, you're hearing from God right now. Keep pressing. Yes. Keep pushing. Don't you dare stop. Keep the momentum. Get your feet off the brake. Get your hands off the brake. Let God take you where he's trying to take you. Friction. Friction, the force that tries to slow your momentum. 
the force that tries to slow your momentum. The scripture goes on to say, it says, let us therefore as many as be perfect be thus minded, and if anything be otherwise minded, God shall reveal even this unto you. Nevertheless, whereunto we have already attained, let us walk by the same rule, let us mind the same thing. So it's saying, even after you break through that wall, you've attained, you got over that bump, you got out of that storm. Huh? They used to have a saying, said, uh, a new level, a new devil. Right? See, because the enemy is not going to ever, he's, he's going to try to stop you all the way up until the day that the rapture comes or you leave out of here. His job is to prevent you from making it to where God wants you to make it to. His job is to prevent you from being the witness, going to witness to the people that he's assigned for you to a witness to. His job is to prevent you from being what God wants you to be. So he's going to continually stop. You may say, I might have won, you might have won that one, but I'm not going to let you win the next one. Right? Until you get to the place where when he sees you coming, he acts just like, you know, they acted when Jesus came on scene. We know who you are. What are you going to do with us? And they say, can you just be kind enough to put us in these swine, let these swine right here, just let us come out of that man, let's go over there, we're going to hang out with the pigs, is that all right with you? Huh? There's going to come a time when you're going to have so much authority because you did not, you, you've thrown the brakes out. Yeah. Right? Have you ever seen the race bikes, bicycles? You ever seen them? They don't have brakes. Yeah. They don't have brakes. Because there's something in us that when fear sets in, we want to pump the brakes. They don't. If you pay attention, if you ever watch any of the bike races, bicycle races, somebody catches them because their feet are locked into the pedals. Mm-hmm. There's no brakes. What if we had that mindset in Christ? We take off all the inhibitions. We take off all the junk that holds up captive. We just say, no, no, God, you're going to have to catch me at the finish line. <laughs> I'm not stopping. Huh? I see that big heel coming. And y'all roller coaster riders. Y'all know what I'm talking about. Huh? That chink, chink, chink going up is what gets you. Huh? They make that noise loud just so it can, you can just count it. <laughs> How many more of those? <laughs> you probably counted them on the train before you. And now all of a sudden you say, oh, this is the last one. And then you're going to look down. There ain't no brakes. There ain't no brakes. Right? So God, where he's trying to take you to, he's trying to put you in a place where he's not, you don't need brakes. Right? Because if I trust in God, huh? Why would I need to stop what he's doing? Right? Catch me at the end. Watch this. If I'm pushing forward, there's another key that you do in racing. Right? It's never look behind you. Because it takes your momentum, it slows you down. You begin to, to fight draft, and, and not only that, you're beginning to look in the wrong direction. If you keep your face forward, huh? You lean into it. Do I have anybody that ever raced for real? You lean into it, you don't lean back. Why? Because I'm pressing toward the direction I'm trying to go to. I'm not trying to pull into a wrong direction. I, I'm not trying to roll, Nelly. I'm not trying to pull it back. I'm trying to push forward. I'm not trying to stop my direction. I'm trying to make sure I'm going exactly where God is trying to take me to. Y'all all right? Can't stop. Nevertheless, we're in two. We have already attained. Let us walk by the same rule. Let us mind the same thing. In that passage, one of the most dominant features or topics in it is to stay focused. Running straight, ooh, running straight, how do you say that? Running straight. <laughs> running straight towards the goal in order to win the prize. And not allowing myself to be distracted or yourself to be distracted or turned aside. Why is it when you're going forward, the enemy will put a detour sign in front of you? You know the direction God said go. But you'll get to a point and there will be a detour sign. Now you've got to argue within yourself. Do I go where God said go or do I follow this detour? What am I going to do? 
I know what you said. I know, I got, I know what you said I needed to do, but obviously you didn't know this detour was going to be there. Right? And we know he's not held by time. We know he's in our yesterday at the same time he's in our today at the same time as he's in our, yes, uh, in our right now, right? In our future, he's in all those places at the same time. So he knew that the enemy was going to put that detour here, but he said, I want you to go. That's when the press comes. Because you don't make your mind up and say, I know that detour is there. And I know they're saying the road is out ahead. But I have strong enough faith in my God that if he told me to go through the, through the detour, that he's going to build a road before I get there. I, I've got to have that much faith. Y'all hear me what I'm saying? Now make sure it's God. Now I don't want to read about none of y'all running off a bridge because you didn't pay attention. All right, I'm talking spiritual now. If God told you to go somewhere, I don't care how bad it looks. I don't care how messed up the people look. I don't care how rough the situation seems. If God said go, you need to just let go of the brakes and just keep on coasting. God is going to make sure that you're okay. I got that kind of faith. God, if you tell me to go. I used to get tickled, man. And, 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 and the Lord allowed me. The Lord allowed me, not me. The Lord allowed me. My wife, my wife can, can attest to this to start our ministry on the streets in California. And so, you know, gangsters and gangbangers and just all manner of stuff that we dealt with back then, that's who we were ministering to, people that were in the streets. So when I came here, everybody was talking about how bad the West End was. Right? She was just telling a story the other day how, you know, I used to break up fights. Like she, now she's a Californian, I wasn't. I grew up here and moved out there when I was 18, 19 years old. She's a Californian, but God had just put that in. I'm just going to stop fights. Right? A couple of girls waylaying each other on the corner with milk crates, just busted each other up. And I'm, I'm stopping that. Two Armenian brothers, and I mean they were some big boys. Busting up, fighting like crazy, and I just walk in there and like I own the joint and stop them, you know. Right? Now, now I'm not bragging. That's not what I'm saying. My point is this. If you know where God has you, you're not afraid of where he's taking you to. Everything, every obstacle I went through in my life, I can look back on it and say, God, you are preparing me for something. Whether I liked it when I was going through or not, I can say, God, I learned from that thing. I know what you can do. Now, I'm not, take, I'm not taking away from Louisville. I'm not taking away from some of the things that happen down here. Some things are, are bad. But what I'm saying is I don't walk around afraid, right? I have nothing to be afraid of. If God is with me, why am I going to be afraid? Chester Wright used to say, it. Uh, what are you going to do, threaten me with heaven? And I'm feeling that, right? I, I'm not afraid of those things. Why? You know, I'm, th those things don't bother me. Right now, the church, I want y'all to get in that place as well where you say, now I'm got to go talk to this guy over here who's shaking and he's on, you know, he's on drugs and he ever, nobody wants to talk to him. I want you to get in a place led of God where you can go over to lay hands on him and the drugs just pop out of his veins. Huh? And everything. And he begins, begins to be sober. Come on. We're not going to stop right there because that's just one side of the coin. I want you to get to the place where you can walk down on Wall Street. Huh? Go lay hands on some big banker and they begin to speak in the marvelous uh, language of heaven. Yes. Huh? Well, you're praying them through and they're getting baptized. We do not pick and choose. I'm trying to tell you where God is taking you. You better get ready. Take the brakes off. Where I thought I couldn't go, I'm about to go. <laughs> First Peter 4. I'm almost done. Maybe. While you're there, what's the three words? Inertia. Inertia, which we have to overcome to get moving. Friction, which tries to stop us. And then what? Momentum. Right? We overcome inertia. We keep it moving. Then we overcome friction because we keep it moving, right? There's not a brick made, not a brick made that will not burn up if the motion is stronger than the brick. Not one. It's going to get too hot for it, okay? Inertia, 
momentum or motion, friction. We overcome inertia. We overcome friction that we might stay what? In motion. Beloved, think it not strange concerning the fiery trials which, what? Is to try you as though some strange thing happened unto you. How many of y'all had like some crazy stuff happening? You're like, why is that happening to me? Have you ever said, and I'm a, I want you to be honest in here. Have you ever said something like, when will it be my turn? Or my time? Hmm? When am I ever going to get out of this? Right? Now, some of us got in a mess on our own. And we wonder when we're going to get out of it. <laughs> it's coming. Just don't get back in it. Learn from your mistakes. Okay? The Bible says... Uh, not to think it strange, but to rejoice in so much as ye are partaker of Christ's suffering. That when his glory shall be revealed, ye may be glad also with exceeding joy. Right? Now, now I'm going to go back for a second. Don't think it strange when the enemy stops apply, starts applying the brakes or the friction. But Rejoice. What happens when you're rejoicing? You got motion. You got momentum. Right? Now, he's saying, I want you to pout about it because then you slow down. But, but here the scripture is saying, begin to rejoice. Right? I, woo. Just total my car. Glory. Hallelujah. Mm. I'm not saying that I want anybody to total their car. But I'm just saying in that midst, because wait a minute, first of all, if you have the strength in your body to give God the praise after your car has been totaled, you ought to just get up and shout and go off anyhow. <laughs> Boss just chewed me out. Huh? Instead of allowing that thing to put on brakes right there and friction on me, oh no, you just you're just gonna make me go to my prayer closet in my praise room. Matter of fact, when the, are, when you're are you done? Thank you for that kind uh, word you just gave me. Then I'm going to go right to the bathroom, shut the door, and begin to shout, God, I don't know what it was, <laughs> but I know that you're doing something great right now because it ain't going to stop me. It ain't going to slow me down. Hmm? Rejoice in as much as you are partakers of Christ's suffering, that when his glory shall be revealed, ye may be glad also with exceeding joy. That's more than joy. That's exceeding joy. That's greater than joy. Are y'all Okay. If he be reproached for the name of Christ. Anybody going through that? Huh? Don't talk about church stuff. Don't play the gospel music. Now, yeah, now I know we're playing all the stuff we want to play. And I, I know we're talking about all the stuff we want to talk about. But, but you, you got to be politically correct. You can't do that. You can't play that here. Right? That's what the enemy's going to do. Right? And it ain't like that everywhere. Huh? So if you be re reproached for the name of Christ, happy are ye. Oh, you don't want me to play that? <laughs> you think that's going to make me mad? Oh, you letting me know is that I've just got to crank it up another level. You just putting me in a place where I'm going to wind it up. Hey, man, I'm not going to play the music. I'm going to start singing the songs. <laughs> well, you can't sing it. Well, I'm going to hum it. I got a song that the angels can't sing. You don't know where I came from. You don't know what I've been through. How are you going to silence me? I'm going to get my praise on. You may go off. You may act a fool, but no breaks are going to stop me. <laughs> happy are ye. <laughs> if you be reported for, my, for the name of Christ, happy are ye for the spirit of glory and of God Resist, resteth upon you on their part he is evil spoken of now watch, watch this it ain't that they hate you they hate what you represent your difference always make a difference the light that you bring in the room will always illuminate the mess in their lives they just want you to turn it down slow it down because you putting them on blast you bringing them out on their part, he is evil spoken of, but on your part, he's what? Glorified. But let none of you, watch, suffer as a murderer or a thief or as an evildoer or a busybody in other man's matters. That's not really part of what I, I just left it in there. I was going to skip over it, but I just wanted to hit it anyhow. 
Don't get caught up in that stuff because then you begin to, break, begin to be the break applier to somebody else's life and you will answer. Don't be a busybody. Don't be all up in everybody's stuff. Don't be a murderer. Don't be putting your tongue in your own people. Okay? Don't be a thief. Don't, don't do that. All right? You got it. Verse 16. Yet if any man suffer as a Christian, let him not be ashamed. Right? I was listening to Brother Anthony's um, testimony, and unless something changed, I don't know. But um, he got hired on the job. He told them in the beginning that he could not work on Sundays. And they said, fine. He comes back a month or two later. They try to make him work on Sundays. He goes not to them, but to God. God goes in there and fixes that thing. And what he did, not only fixed it for him, but he fixed it for another uh, Baptist minister that happened to work there, who I don't believe was even complaining about it. Right? And he let them both be off on Sundays. Then just recently, they came back and said, either you're going to work Sundays or you're going to be fired. That was what, about two, three weeks ago? And he's still showing up to work every day. Unless something's changed. I haven't heard nothing about it. He's still going to work and he's still off on Sunday. Can you give God some praise? You got a choice to make. You got a choice to make. When bad news comes your way, you can stop and listen to all the bad news. You can just listen to the, the voice of the enemy. Or you can just keep on trudging. Right, try it. Well, I'm, trying. I'm just making up words here. Uh -huh. <laughs> Thank you. You can just tread right on through him. Amen. And just knock them out of the way and just keep going. Right? Because you can't slow me down. You can't slow me down. Amen. Can I, can I mess with you? Is that all right? Can I tell your story? Yeah. Same thing. She went to work and they told her. This was how long ago? A few years ago? Not, well, I don't know if it's been that long. Told her, you can't, you, you've got to wear pants or you can't work here. And she's got to take care of her family. What did they tell you just the other day? Come on, somebody. Hey. But some people won't push for that. Right. They'll stop and say, no, I'm going to compromise with the world. Huh? I'm going to let you bully me around because I need that J-O-B. But there's other people that says, look, for Christ I live and for Christ I die. When it's said and done, this part of my life is only for a short period. But eternity... <laughs> goes on and on and on and on and on. I'm not living for right now. I'm living for eternity. Yes. Yes. <laughs> go ahead. No brakes here. Now some of y'all just going to go out to y'all's car and take y'all's brakes off. Don't do that. <laughs> We're talking spiritual here, y'all. Don't be ashamed. But let him glorify God on his behalf. For the time has come that judgment must begin at the house of God right here. And if it first begin at us, what shall the end of them that obey not the gospel of God? Are y'all following this? Remember, if we, we, we uh, reject the power, we have damnation. You remember that earlier? Mm -hmm. Right here, what's it saying? What will be the end of them that obey not the gospel of God? And if the righteousness, what, and the righteous scarcely be saved. My father-in-law used to say this, and if the righteous barely make it by the skin of their teeth. He used to say it all the time. I thought it was a scripture forever, man. <laughs> that's how he would say it, right? By the skin of his teeth, right? If the righteous scarcely be saved, where shall the ungodly and the sinner appear? There's a difference here. There's a difference here. You know? And now, this is how I was always taught, so I'm going to teach it to you like I was taught. Why would it say ungodly and sinner? If we're all what? Born in sin and shaped in iniquity. Right? How I was taught was the ungodly was kind of like the uncola. It's the people that knew but would not do. Now, that's just how I was taught. Y'all can theologize me forever. Y'all can tell me I'm wrong. That's fine. I don't have a problem with that. 
But the bottom line is, where are they going to be? And if I fall in any of those categories, where am I going to be? <laughs> if they barely make it, where would the ungodly and the sinner appear? Wherefore, let them that suffer according to the will of God. Touch your neighbor and say, now he's talking right at me. Wherefore, let them that suffer according to the will of God commit to keeping of their souls to him in well-doing as unto a faithful creator. Right? This is, the, this is the dilemma that people fight the most. Our bodies are the temple of the Holy Ghost. Our bodies are the temple of the Holy Ghost. Which means he is the landlord. They belong to him. How they look is determined by the landlord, or how they should look. Are y'all hearing me? How they're displayed, uh, how they move, is all determined by what? The landlord. Now let me help you out. As a, a resident residing in this temple with God, if there is a leak in the roof, all I need to do is to call the owner of the property. Who will fix his temple? Y'all not hearing what I'm saying? Yes. So when I'm sick, I can go to God and say, guess what? That's for free, y'all. I don't have to apply breaks. I don't have to worry about what they said. I don't have to care about all that stuff. Yes. Right? Now, we got to take care of the temple. We do. We, we, we're under contract to take care of it. Yes. You understand? But when it starts to break down... Kind of like some of y'all that rent places now, you may have to mow the lawn, you may have to do a little work there, you may, you know what I'm saying, you got to take out the trash. It's your job. But when the furnace breaks down, it doesn't, it's not your furnace, that belongs to the owner. Huh? And something needs to be repaired, you can just call it. Do -do -do -do. Now he's not like some, he's not a slumlord, y'all better hear what I'm saying. He's not the one that's going to keep you raggedy, he's the one that says, no, I got you, what, you need what? All right, I got an angel's on the way right now, going to take care of that. Matter of fact, I'm just going to blink one eye and it's done. Yeah. Yeah. See? <laughs> now it's time to flip it and then I'm done. We're going to flip it. Because the enemy is constantly trying to bring friction in our lives. But now it's time for us to apply some resistance back at him. Because we have the authority to put the brakes on the devil. Huh? We have that, yes sir. James 4 and 7. Submit yourselves therefore to God. I'm done. Submit yourselves first. See, we, we like, don't put the brakes on until you've got the authority to put the brakes on the enemy. Submit your, yourselves, therefore, to God. Watch this. And then resist. Watch this. Resistance creates what? Friction. Friction slows down what? Momentum. And if we slow it down to a stop, then it's got to overcome inertia. Now, if we keep enough friction there, it is difficult for you to get to the place to where it can overcome because it's not over, only overcoming inertia. It's also trying to overcome friction at the same time. Resist the devil. Watch this. And flee from him. Now, some of us look at that flee like that means to, to, to run scared. No. Resist him and walk away. You got to know that it's done. You can't allow the devil to keep you there. Sometimes we're praying and rebuking and we're doing it knowing all this and he's already gone. Right? We got to have enough faith, right? Just to get there and say, boom, it's over. I told, I told some of y'all, I, I, I was at home 
And uh, I, I, I woke up. You know how something wakes you up out of the bed, out of your sleep? I mean, knocked out. Woke up. And I look up, and there is a window open. Not in the house. Over my bed, a window open. And there was a head sticking in it, just like that. I could paint you the picture, exactly what it looked like. I was not asleep. Not at that time. I was asleep before. I raised up. I rebuked it. Cast it out. Told it it can't come back. It was like somebody had slammed a big door. Boom. He was gone. What do you think I did after that? I rolled over and went back to sleep. Now, somebody said, you should have went and anointed everything. Well, maybe so. I didn't feel led to do that. I knew that I had dealt with what that was at that moment. I resisted him, and then I fleed from him. Yeah. All right? Now, you got to make sure he's out. You know, That was a while ago. I don't play that mess. I'm not playing that mess. I know that sounds just weird, and I know people on Facebook are like, he's gone cuckoo for Cocoa Puff. Right? <laughs> I know, I know, I know. I said, because they, they don't believe in that stuff. That's hocus pocus to them. But the reality of it is, you've got some options. I could have got scared and tucked under, and hid under my bed, right? Call, called my pastor. I could have, I could have ran all over the place and said, I need some help right now. Woke up the whole house. Come on, let's pray. Get some stuff together. Well, you know, you know, everybody coming out there with their their super soaker water guns with anointing oil and just just blew holes all in the house with the water gun and you understand shooting now. You know, we could we could have went through all that. But there's a time and a place where you understand that if I'm with God, greater is He that is in me than He that's in this world. When you really understand that, you can resist the devil. You can put the brakes on right there. On him. Yes. What he planned to do, he could no longer do. Uh, yes. Right? That's it. But you got to get that place. Right? You got to submit yourself to God. Because if you don't submit yourself to God, you can do all that stuff. And the devil say, him I know. And yeah, yeah, Jesus I know. <laughs> well, who are you? You've got to submit. You got to take care of that first. Don't go playing with something that you're not ready to play with, right? But also don't run around scared. Don't you dare run around scared. Don't let the devil scare you, right? His teeth are pulled. His teeth are pulled. I, 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 I tell you all that, I get it. But I, like I said, I will not forget what Jesus said. All power, both in heaven and on earth, and, and in earth, are now in my hands. I know what he said. Now, we knew that he had all power in heaven. The declaration was to us, but more so to Satan, saying your days of reigning are over. And those that be with me have more power, devil, than you ever have. And some of y'all saying, how do you say that? Because greater things than these shall you do. The same spirit that raised his is the same spirit that quickens your mortal body. It is the same spirit that lives in you or dwells in you, which is the Holy Ghost. You have the same power and authority to cast out devils, lay hands on the sick, and they shall recover. You have that authority. Don't take it lightly and stop putting on the brakes. Now, how many, let's be honest, how many of you felt a nudge to go and pray for somebody and you walked away because you didn't feel adequate. God told you to go witness to somebody but you didn't feel adequate. Huh? Now some of y'all just all that. I get that. I don't care who you talk to. Huh? But Dillard over there, you don't care. Amen. That ain't a bad thing. He don't care. He's going to just walk up in there and just let him know, hey, I'm Johnny. I don't know why he's Johnny. <laughs> no breaks. No breaks. Let's stand. Let's stand. Let's stand. Now listen. We're going to pray. We're not just going to walk out these doors. We're not going to do that because it is imperative that we reestablish some things. The reason I've been talking about this for the last couple of days is because we are about to embark into a brand new level. Mm -hmm. We're about to do that. And the only way 
that we can go is together is if everybody is pushing in the same direction. Right? I can press, but I need you to press with me. I don't want you giving up. I don't want you throwing in the towels. I don't want you to look at your mistakes and think I'm not worthy. I don't want you to look at your troubles and saying, no, I'm not smart enough. I don't want you to look and say, man, I just mess up every time. But tonight, I want you to take the brakes off. I want you to take the brakes off. I want you to resubmit yourself to God. To resubmit yourself to God. And while you're doing that, I want you to resist that devil that's been trying to plague your mind. Trying to make you not decide what you're going to do in school. Yeah. Making you fight against yourself. I want to drop out how many times? Ready to quit. I want to quit my job. I just want to walk off. Well, you may be there to win somebody that you haven't even met yet. So let's pray. Lord, in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus.